Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to TED Talk. Can you believe it? This is episode 50. Now, how the hell did that happen? This was said, hey, let's do one of these. We'll see how it goes. And here we are a few weeks later, episode 50. It's been a tremendous ride, and I'm looking forward to the next 500. It should be great. Today's show is going to be, uh, well, this is going to be, as we say in England or Wales, a belter. We've got two, uh, two people from the United Kingdom, and uh, you're going to love this one. Uh, first of all, a friend of mine from, uh, I believe he's in London, uh, but I learned today that his family is originally from Glasgow, Scotland. Welcome to the show, Michael Quinn. Michael, how are you? Hi, Terry. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, good. It's so nice to see you, mate. It's, uh, I was just, I think uh, Carl was about to take the mickey out of me, but I was just saying I've become a bit of a fan of the show, so it's so lovely to be here. Oh, it's great to have you on the show. Where are you right now? I'm in uh, the, the land of roundabouts, Milton Keynes. <laughs> That's great. You know, it's funny. We live in Phoenix. We've got one roundabout near us, and I used to tell people, I just, I just, you can just sit there with a camera and laugh. Are people trying to negotiate the roundabouts, but they're getting rid of it. They're putting lights in, so we'll be roundabout free in Phoenix pretty soon. You know we've got them everywhere here, right, though? There you go. In Milton Keynes, they're everywhere. Because it's, it's built on an American grid system, so every other road is a roundabout. It's crazy. Wow, love it, love it. Also, John was on the show. Um, boy, what a talented guy. If you've seen... Well, there's so many things to quote. Um, the most recent thing of these lockdown videos that he's doing that are that are bombarding the internet and blowing up YouTube <laughs> and so on. Welcome to the show from Who's Molly, Carl Morgan. Carl, how are you? I'm good, dude. How are you? Good. I think uh, it's got to be the best hair we've had on the show in all 50 episodes. Oh, stop. Look at this. It needs such a bad cut. It's so bad. But I, the good thing is I know it's bad, so that's all right. I can live with that. And, uh, and where are you? Where are you right now? I'm in Swansea. Sunny, sunny, never sunny Swansea. <laughs> now, <laughs> a friend of ours is Christian Phillips, who we both know is an amazing talent. And the little little thing we have on my iPhone app, the weather app that we put on, you know, yeah. I've got Phoenix and Dubai and Cabo. I also have- <laughs> Just so I can screenshot him occasionally and say, is this what you're suffering for? <laughs> yeah. And he's in the worst part. He's in neat. Oh. <laughs> I'm hearing you both on the show. This will be a blast. Uh, like I said, <laughs> episode 50, and it's been such an amazing ride getting here. And we've got so many other, um, so many great guests coming up uh, over the next uh, 50 or so episodes. We've already got lots of people walking, uh, watching, including Beth, who says, Roundabout, is that the British version of a rotary? She has no clue. We'll, we'll explain roundabouts later. And um, Jan says, Jan Stanley says, Carl sounds like Christian. Sorry. Just more handsome. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go with the, the, with the uh, random questions as we start uh, uh, on all our shows. This one's going out, first of all, to Michael. Michael, tell us one thing. One thing that most people in your life would not know about you. Um, God, at the top of my head, um, I nearly, nearly became very good at judo. Oh. That's the most random thing ever. But mum and dad always gave me loads of opportunities to try different things. And um, I was really into judo. And for, for, for a minute in my life, I was like, oh, this is, this, I think this is the route I'm going to go. Um, and that's information that I never really share with anyone, just in case anyone thinks I'm like a secret ninja. Uh, <laughs> how old were you? Um, I must have started when I was like nine until about 13, and I generally became really good. Um, thought, I was, thought I was a karate kid, but just didn't really go any further. All right, awesome. Uh, Carl, someone just said it's Christian with hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> one thing that most people in your life would not know about you, um, that before I joined the band and started writing songs that I, I was going to become an actor that I wasn't music kind of wasn't my thing. Okay. It was all about acting and I did some TV stuff and, um, did some stuff in Holby sit, you know, like I was a character in Holby sit and stuff like that. And then, uh, got to a point, I just had to make a decision. Was it music? Was it acting? And I went with music. Should have stuck with acting. <laughs> no, 
I think you made a very, very good choice. Um, your voice, by the way, is, is stunning. I want to get into that later. Uh, thanks, Terry. A lot of people have uh, uh, a lot of people have commented on it to me, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, next question. This one is uh, this one is for Carl first. Carl, if okay. uh, if there was a, a movie made about your life, at some point, someone's going to make a movie about, okay. about, about Carl Morgan. Who would you choose to play you? Well, I would choose Zac Efron because he's really handsome and he's really ripped and he can sing and he can dance. But the truth is probably Michael Sarah from uh, Superbad, the really skinny, geeky kid would end up playing me. But I'd choose Zac Efron, but I don't think anyone else would. So before the show's over, I'd like one of our graphic artists to go on, create the poster for the, uh, the biopic for Carl and throw those actors in and let's see what it would look like. Oh, By the way, we have got someone on the on the feed here called uh, Melissa Williams saying, yes. now, now I need to find Carl in Holby City. Ah, uh, started something, haven't I? Started something I can't get rid of. Damn it. And Simon Deary said, are those candles behind Carl safe? That hair looks like it might go up in flames. Simon, it's a good job I'm in Swansea. We're going to fight in a minute. <laughs> And Christian Phillips said they've already made a film about Carl. It's called The Grinch. He's <laughs> 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 not wrong. A biopic on your life, a movie about Michael Quinn. Who would play you? It could only, well, it could only be one, one person. It'd have to be my son, Presley. He, um, he, he literally repeats everything I do, and I'm, I'm sure he's a, he's a budding little actor. Um, if it wasn't Presley, then I'm a massive fan of um, Taron from Rocketman. Yeah. Um, obviously, he's done loads of other stuff, but someone like him, he's brilliant. Um, he can sing, he can act. He's not bad looking either, is he? So, yeah, that's yeah. about the role a little bit, but yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> you might, need to, you might need to grow another foot. How old's Presley? Presley's three. Brilliant. What a fantastic name, Presley Quinn. That's got to be higher at all. Going on 33. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. One more random question for you, and um, and it is this. And it's really about your careers. Both have had a, a great careers and kind of reached the top in various different areas. Um, if you could go back to one moment on stage, just a moment, not really a tour or a show, but one single moment that you would uh, go back and say, hey, that's one of the best moments, um, Carl, uh, pick a, a, one of the best stage moments that you can recollect. I think probably when we played the first car fest, it was the first big, big festival. The year before we'd done this really small stage, it was, I reckon about 40 people turned up to watch us the year before. And then, um, the year after we played to 35,000 people who were, you know, and it was all our songs and yeah the first time when the drummer counted uh fame in it was it was a moment it, it was it was amazing and melissa was there holding a big who's molly sign yeah yeah people that's that's a lot um that that's 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 great gotta be a great feel gotta be a great feeling michael before you answer andrew gita said presley is such a cool little dude Oh, well, Andrew Gitt is not a bad call, dude, either, is he? Um, you know, I've got to say one thing. Uh, my wife's obviously watching this as well. And Carl, she's just become the biggest Gavin and Stacey fan. But my wife's from Poland. So she hadn't okay. really heard the Welsh accent that much before. So cool. when you went moment, I was like, she must be loving this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And the person says you can't believe Presley's three already. No. <laughs> Crazy. Um, your best stage moment. Tell us one of those. Well, as you know, Terry, I'm a slight Elvis fan. Yeah. Um, and I was very, very lucky. My first ever West End show was a show called Jailhouse Rock. Um, it was the movie adaptation um, that Elvis played the character Vincent Everett in the movie, and I was the alternate lead. So for like the first four or five months, I was just there as like a guard at the back or standing at the side and never really getting my shot. And then that very first day when I got to go on and I was playing the lead in the show and the Elvis character, Vincent, he does like 25 numbers in the show. And at the end, it's, it's an actor music show anyway. So the whole cast plays instruments. 
and I'm stood there at 21 with a whole cast around me in, on the Piccadilly stage in, in the heart of the West End as my hero. Um, it was just, I've got the, the best rush in the world. Nothing has ever compared to it since. It was incredible. That's brilliant. That's great. That's, that, that's really good. Your wife, Patty, is on here. She is watching, and she's just writing, ha-ha. Now, she's either laughing at you or she's laughing at Carl's accent. I don't know which one it is. It's, uh, it's, it's, I'm it's you. It's you. It's definitely you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, let's stick with you, Michael. Let's talk about your career. Obviously, um, uh, M- MQP, Michael Quinn Productions, is someone that Tad Management works closely with all the time. Um, we've got The Roller Boys, who's a terrific, terrific uh, show. We are going to show some of that near the end of the uh, end of the program today. Um, we were all just gutted when we had the US tour uh, coming up and COVID-19. Well, how did... Well, we've been over it, but tell, tell the viewers how you felt when that happened. Uh, it was such a shame because, obviously, having you guys support us with the Roller Boys has just been amazing. Obviously, Jan has opened up so many doors for us on the cruise side, and we've got an incredible contract with Hapag Lloyd. And like, I take the boys. I'm part of the show when we go on to do it Hapag Lloyd, and it's just there's, there's nothing quite like it. It's the most incredible cruise, and that's down to you guys and Jan, obviously, for what she's done for us. Uh, but then obviously you opened up the door for us to do this Arizona tour and we were in rehearsals. We were so excited. The skates were packed. Um, we had people messaging us from America saying we can't wait to have the show across here. And, you know, cause the show, I think the show really appeals to so many different people cause we've got the 1950 show and then we've got the very sort of like Motown through to the current music show. Um, so we, we were devastated, but you know, I keep on saying to everyone, it's everyone's in the same boat, right? So you can't get too numb about it. And I'm sure that, um, we will definitely get a chance to do it again because we will come to Arizona in, in a, in a shot. Oh yeah. We're doing, we're doing it in 2021 for sure. And we now are sitting on three roller skating ramps that we built for the state. <laughs> the only time we can ever use it is every so often we'll get the tag, crew the 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 uh the people that work in the office here to put skates on that's the only way we can go in the office to come down the ramps <laughs> brilliant get some skates on nick because i'd love to see that <laughs> no you would not want it you no, would... brilliant but tell, tell me how it all began i would know judo between nine and 13 but when when did judo turn into music uh it's kind of really because of my granddad my my mum's dad he was a big musical theater fan he used to play all the old musicals to us everything from seven brides seven brothers to oklahoma west side story and i just got hooked um and then obviously my dad being a a, a real glaswegian always going to the theater and music and that sort of culture was really around their family um when i saw a pantomime my very first pantomime when i was like 10 and i just got got the bug and I said to my parents, I went, that's what I want to do. And a year later, I was on the stage at the Reading Hexagon Theatre with, um, you probably know these names, Terry, but Leslie Grantham, yeah. um, Eunice Stubbs, Bernie Clifton and Michaela Strachan. So a year later, I'm there going, oh my God, this is the best thing in the world. And then just got the bug and just carried on and on and went and did professional training And then I was obviously very, very fortunate to kind of like touch on every aspect of the industry, whether it be um, working West End shows or tours. Um, You know, I did a reality TV show myself um, and I was lucky enough to be in the finals of that, which then led on to working as a guest entertainer myself. Um, And then ended up in another one of my dream shows, which was Starlight Express and played on my dream role, such as me on the cup. There you go, a bit of self-promotion. Um, and I created the Roller Boys. And we started my company, Michael Quinn Productions, myself and my wife, and so many amazing team members have just helped us create so much amazing content. And then, obviously, we got introduced by James Denning. Yeah. And uh, the rest is history. Actually, Jimmy, it's funny you say that, because Jimmy is a... Jimmy's in Vegas and he's coming, he's coming to stay with him and Yvette are coming down, staying with us this weekend. So uh, we can talk about you then. Yeah. yeah well, I, I, well, I was a big, I was a big fan of his, you know, years ago. Cause I remember seeing him, Buddy Holly. Yeah. 
as the big bopper. And when I was at college and just going, God, this guy's amazing. And then got introduced to him through other friends. And we wouldn't be here doing this now if it wasn't for him. So uh, Jimmy's, a great, Jimmy's a great guy. And we, I've known Jimmy since he was, you know, two feet tall. I've uh, known him from since being a, a kid. And the one thing Jimmy won't tell you, and I hope he's going to watch this, but if he's not, I'm going to make sure he does when he's here this weekend, is Jimmy is a staunch Manchester City fan. However, somebody changed his mind because when he was a young teenager, he was a United fan. And I have a photograph of him in a United shirt coming to Old Trafford with Sam Kane, myself and Jimmy to watch European match. And he will never let, he said, I forced him to wear it. But I didn't. Jimmy was quite voluntarily being a Man United fan. So just remind him of that when you see him. Brilliant. <laughs> well, you know, in all honesty, I've, I've always been a bit of a glory hunter and jumped from team to team because of friends. Even though I shouldn't tell my dad this, but I, I supported Leeds United back in the day when it was like Gary Speed, Gary McAllister, all that lot. And then switched to Reading because I moved to Reading. And me and Dad saw them play in the finals of the first division when we thought they were going to go into Premier League. Didn't happen. So then I'll just now tell everyone I support Celtic. Otherwise, my dad would be upset. It's good. Wise, wise move. Just going back to the Roller Boys, we're going to play a lot of the Roller Boys near the end of this show. But in your company, Michael Quinn Productions, which I'd also love to talk about, gives a little synopsis about that. But within that organization, you um, developed and produced a fantastic. Uh, male classical cro- crossover group called Per Per Voy, who we also always call Per Voy, and got it wrong, but it's Per Voy. But tell us, tell us about MQP, and tell us about Per Voy. Um, so obviously, Michael Quinn Productions came about after Starlight Express. I'd actually had a company um, years and years ago, just as a kind of the credit crunch was happening. I was doing Joseph in the West End. And my business business partner was a guy called Ricky Rojas, who's currently in uh, Moulin Rouge on Broadway. And we invested, started creating um, acts, and unfortunately, it just wasn't the right time to keep on investing in stuff like that. And then a good friend of mine out in Germany was like, why don't you start doing the company again? This is years on, obviously. Um, so we created the Roller Boys, and we just got really lucky because... Um, Butlins, for anyone in America that doesn't know what Butlins is, is a big holiday park in England. They have like three of them. Um, they saw what we were doing and they, the, the big boss, Mike Adolphin, turned around, offered us like, I think it was 150 shows right. from nothing. He saw a charity show and he went, I'll give you 150 shows. Come and we'll sell the act to Butlins. So we were playing to thousands and thousands of people for the whole first year. It was incredible. Yeah. And because of that and because of Butlins, really, that helped us invest to start creating more shows. Um, and just like the, the TAD team, we've got a, a really strong team of like choreographers and musical directors and um, family members that have just been involved from day one um, to help us create. Um, and they've been incredible. That's why, you know, obviously joining forces with TAD has been so amazing because it's like we're bringing one big family to another big family. Um, awesome. And it's been wonderful that obviously we could bring Pervoy to you. Uh, that came about. I was doing, um, I was actually doing the Rolex Tennis Championships in Monte Carlo, and one of the guys, Joseph, who's in the group Pervoy, um, he's also the musical director. We were walking along in Monte Carlo, really shabby day, and I just said to him, I was like, Do you know, I really want a classical crossover group, um, and it was him that came up with the name. At first, it was going to be called uh, Pate which sounds a bit a bit like you're from California saying like, party. Yeah. Changed that. We scrapped that uh, and went with Pavoy, which is actually the same meaning. It means for you. And um, we have the most amazing three guys. And it's everything from the three tenors meets Il Devo, better Josh Groban. Um, even yeah. David Phelps is in there. We do, uh, we've got a guy called Constantine that sings, I want to know what love is, the David Phelps version just unbelievable um and it's i have to do this we're touring david in arizona next february no you're not absolutely you've got it you've got to come and see oh my God. i've seen him live i saw him at the uh, indigo the o2 met him after it was just i was like a little girl i was like you know david Fox? have you seen have you heard him sing uh no no 
I'll send you a link. It, the, Ooh, guy, okay. the guy is just insane. In the, just, oh, there's not a vocalist like him. I promise you. Wow. I'll send, I'll send you the link. Before we move on, let's show the audience a little bit of uh, Pervoy and the kind of stuff that you put together. Check this out. Yeah, be great. the spirit, but I really wanted you to sing what I sing, copy paste, yeah? Oh, such good voices and, and great guys too we met them in the uh, in fort lauderdale wonderful guys michael we could spend all day talking about the stuff you do i'm going to come back to you a little bit later on because i definitely want to uh, talk about uh, roller boys and this exciting stuff that's happening with simon cowell but we'll get to that in a, in a little bit carl with the hair that's about to burn with the candles according to somebody how are you mate i'm good dude really good <clears throat> talked about football off off air for a little bit. We're not going to focus on football a lot, um, but as most people that know me watching this uh, know that I've been a Man United fan since I was in the womb. Um, and Carl is a United fan, which was very. Uh, and apparently, you made plays for them as well. Um, yeah, my friend Dan. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, he's doing well, really well. Yes, he is. He's brilliant. Small, fast, and uh, about to tear it up again in a couple of weeks. So we're excited about. Yeah. That. Um, that's good. I don't know if you noticed me cringe when uh, when Michael said Leeds United. Oh, ouch. <laughs> it was a stinger. Yeah, that was, oh, no, not much. But we'll get to that later. So, Carl, um, who's Wow, you guys have done amazing. Incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been fun. It's been hard work. It's been really hard work because... We come from a small city, all of us come from uh, from Swansea, and it's you kind of got it, got to get out to come back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of one of those. But um, how did it come yeah, about? It's been good. How did it come about? Because obviously there must have been a stuff for Carl prior to that, whether it was acting. Yeah. But um, but how did who's Molly uh, come about? Well, I've always written songs. I've always kind of well, I tried to write songs and I did some solo stuff and some solo writing and then just kind of wanted to not have to take the burden of, I think I put it out under, under my name. I, I, and then I booked some gigs and then I turn up and, I, and with a band and, I, you know, we'd get put on the same gig as people with cellos and violins and trumpet. And in the end it was just, it was like, no one got, you know what I mean? They thought maybe I was coming with an acoustic guitar, but a singer songwriter kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted some mates on stage more than anything. Just wanted to kind of, um, the sound that I, I write is very big and kind of anthemic and stuff like that. And it just lended itself, I guess, to, to be in a band. Yeah. Last night, I, uh, I'll, I'll admit that I, I didn't really know much about Who's Molly. Uh, That's at all. all right. But I, uh, with knowing Christian, seeing the lockdown videos, and knowing I was doing this show, I sat in the jacuzzi last night with a bunch of bees that were creating a hive about three feet away from me, and wow. um, and um, put uh, put it on Spotify, and it's it's cool stuff. I mean, oh, thanks, man. You listen to something for the first time, and then you um, you hear it, and you go, "I, I want to go back and hear that song." And then, you know, if you're on Spotify, which I was, and then you listen to the next one and go, no, hang on a minute, let me hear this. And then before you know, uh, you go, okay, shit, now I want to watch the whole, listen to the whole album again. Oh, uh, good. 
I remember, that, I want to talk about you, but I'm talking about me for a second. I, I remember having exactly the same feeling when I first heard Jellyfish, which wasn't long ago. I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't know Jellyfish at all. And uh, I think it was Nick that showed me the album and I played Join in the Fan Club. And I had the same feeling, think, God, I love that song. And then uh, I can't remember what the next song is. On, but I started listening to that. And before you know it, you're at the album, end of the album and you know you're going to... I had the same feeling about Who's Molly last night. Um, oh, that's amazing. I'm excited to hear more. But what about the name? What the, name? Uh, the name came from um, a Beatles song from Obla Di Obla Da. Okay. Because Molly's the singer in the band. Yeah. And that's where the name came from. Yeah. Oh, love it, love it, love it. And that was the first yeah. lockdown uh, video with Christian. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was a really weird because I, I don't I don't know that Christian knew that that's with the that we just both love love the song and yeah, how strange. That's that's great. The, the lockdown videos are uh, they're uplifting and um, and you and Christian, God, you do it right. Because well, lot- we go ahead. Uh, no, we just try to make people happy. That's the key, right? We're all stuck in the same position. We're all, you know, we all have stuff to do in the day and songs to write and songs to do of our own. But then we want to come together. We want to make people as happy as we can and give them a bit of hope, I guess, and a bit of a bit of sunshine. Well, it helps you guys have got killer vocals as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> No, it's great. I guess that's what I was saying. They were so good. I don't know if you've seen the, all of them, Mike. I, I, I've seen them all, and I know they've got another one coming out in a few days that I'm excited about. And I, I was excited because Christian asked me if I'd like to be in one, and I was excited. Yeah. He said, do you want to play piano on Mr. Blue Sky? And I said, yeah. And I got the mic, and I set it up, and I realized that the likely reason he really wanted it was being in Phoenix – I was the only one that could have really guaranteed a blue sky, even though he caught some in Swansea. So maybe that's what yeah. happened. But I still... His, his was photoshopped. His was, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I was looking at um, some of the stuff that you sent to us. You've already mentioned this 35,000 uh, um, audience, 35,000 people. What's your biggest audience, Michael? What's the biggest audience you've sent in front of? Um... I guess it would have to be on the TV show I did, which was Grease is a Word for ITV. I think we were getting like 14, 15 million viewers every weekend, which, which is incredible. Um, unfortunately, there was no like major social media at the time. Otherwise, I'd probably be an influencer now. Right, exactly. Well, the largest live audience I've played in front of was about 7,000. It's normally 500 but I had this one gig where it was outdoors in a park and it was, that was pretty amazing. But then I'm looking at this with the, uh, uh, the uh, anthem you wrote, Carl, for the 2018 European athletics that yeah. had about 1.2 billion. Yeah. It's weird, huh? Wouldn't, did, and then did you have a large percentage of them buying the, uh, the, well, it, so we, we never, we put, only put it out on Spotify. So you could only stream it. We've never, release the physical copy of anything who's molly wise is that right yeah never put a physical copy out it's only ever been spotify and apple music wow and amazon and stuff like that yeah so I, this, um, this 300 uh, limited edition of lockdown is uh yeah that's the first thing that, that's the first cd i've ever signed have you sold them yet yeah i think they i think there's a couple left that most of them are gone that's crazy. What a, what an interesting um, strategy as well. Do, do you think you have plans for physical product? I think eventually uh, what we've tried to do is put songs out. Uh, I think the way people consume music these days, it's so dif- difficult because when a song is attached, we've been lucky. We had, we had the song in the Tom Cruise movie. We had the Olympics. We wrote the song. They used the song for the best area. We had the McDonald's ad. We had the, uh, European games. We've had all these kind of moments and what we've tried to do is release a song when we have kind of something coming up so that people, I think when people get a 10 track album, as much as I love it, and there's a handful of people that still love getting an album, Mm. feeling the cover, doing all of those things. Most people listen to playlists. So they just listen to your song in a, in amongst 40 other songs 
and they, they consume music in that way. So I think we've tried to kind of move with the time and, and do it like that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an interesting change in the dynamic and the, the business of, uh, of, of selling music and, and using it to propel your career. Definitely different. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I'm, I'm actually looking over to the screen here because I'm looking at uh, winners of uh, best band, best single, best live, all of that kind of stuff. So it's pretty amazing stuff. Uh, if anyone ha- doesn't, well, first of all, if anyone has not seen or heard of Who's Molly, we're going to get a link uh, on our feed here so you can uh, you can go and check that out because you'll spend your weekend doing it and you won't regret it. Um, I appreciate that. Stuff. But uh, check out this video. This is Who's Molly and Carmen. stuff uh, we'll, we'll get that link on there go go and uh, go and listen to who's molly there's a couple of things i want to mention that the songs are amazing the production too um apart from the strings the strings seem to leave a little bit to be desired who <laughs> oh, was it? uh some some dude in in wales it's like a- no chris christian does all our if we ever need strings and orchestral stuff Christian, I just picked the phone up and I'm like, yeah, it's me again. I need a favor. Uh, he's great. He's, he does so all good. that. His vocal arranging. Uh, again, another thing, if you want to check out, check out the Sonic Executive Sessions. That's just yes. Insane. So I, I, I literally nagged Christian to, I said, look, stop, stop wasting your time with everyone else. Write songs with me for your Sonics thing. I'll write songs with you. And he yeah. finally let me in, like wedged the door, him and Tim. They wedged the door open and let me in for five minutes. So, I, yeah, we've got a song together for his next uh, album. Tim's great, too. Brilliant. He's amazing. Uh, but you glossed over, you just seemed to throw in when we were talking about your career, as Michael pointed out off camera. Oh, yeah, by the way, we did something for Tom Cruise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, 
it, it, that day we had a call and it was like, oh, you're down to the last three for a song in uh, uh, for the trailer for America Made, but it's the worldwide trailer and it'll be in all the cinemas. It was like, oh, all right then, ta-da! It was a bit like that. And then it was like, nope, we've got it. And then we didn't hear from anyone for two weeks, which was terrifying because you couldn't tell anyone. And then we finally got the call and it was just the most surreal uh, thing ever. Just incredible. So the movie's American Made and your uh, uh, song is, um, what was the song, what was the title of the song? So the song was Welcome to the Good Life. And um, it was the, the trailer. So when you went to the cinema, it was like the trailer for it. It was on the TV. And in fact, uh, my wife and I went on a holiday to Florida and sat down having breakfast and it came on the TV. It right. came on the TV and while we were having breakfast and, but it, yeah, just the most surreal thing in the world. It's right. funny how you can go through your career with a lot of success, but it's those little things, maybe sat in a hotel having a breakfast and oh crap, that's me. For sure. For sure. It's great, isn't it? I, we've got so many viewers watching this and, and, uh, uh and making comments um, but um, we've got someone on here called uh, Helen Edge, Edgington said brand new Who's Molly fan here got into your music after seeing Carl on live sessions with Tom Vaughan on Saturday nights and I've only been listening a few weeks love you guys so there's a new uh, um, Sam Kane said great to see Michael looking so well a um, bunch of people throwing hearts on and uh, Sam Kane said so many amazing artists have come from Wales and uh, I just want to throw in here that the spelling of my name is D-A-V-I-E-S. Hey. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, great. And uh, my comment, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know my sense of humor about strings, um, was in jest, Christian is the most insane arranger, vocalist, and friend. He's great. Carl, it's great, uh, brilliant. And uh, talking about uh, who's Molly, I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated, if I'm honest, that I didn't okay. say a week ago so I could talk in a little more depth about some of the individual songs um, so so maybe we'll revisit this same with you Michael and, the, and, and getting well, to straight on Spotify after this who's Molly yeah. the whole way uh, yeah, I appreciate it guys hey Great. Terry can I just uh, talk in the comments some, somebody wrote um, what's that t-shirt you're wearing Michael and yeah. can I just show you one yeah uh, it says I found this on the web no not Siri thank you Siri's answering for me it says uh, the, the show must go on. Like and if you haven't seen this, it's all like the current shows in the West End. And there's a, a company called um, Acting for Others. Um, it's a theatre support fund in England and all of like the, the West End shows and stuff. And you can order these T-shirts online. The whole community, like theatre community is getting involved. Um, that's a logo there. Oh, great. Can you yeah. say can you send me that link? We'll throw that link on the... Uh... Yeah, we will do. And you can see all the West End shows there. This is a really amazing fund, and it's really helping everyone out. So Good. Yeah, we'll jump on that as well. Definitely. Terry. Yes, Terry, my teacher's from H&M. Yeah. Say again. My teacher's from H&M. So. Uh, well, we won't put their link other on. Bra other brands are available. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Duncan Heather said, Michael's a legend always at the forefront. <laughs> of creativity you're so looking forward to working with you again soon oh that's nice he's a wicked guy great guy duncan's great we've been talking with duncan never found the right time to uh to work together but i wanted to get that going so we're going to get that going for sure he's got an amazing irish show um yeah. irish on emerald storm it's it's killer absolutely killer get in there now because loads of other people are interested he's uh, really uh, we have just um, posted that link for those Show Must Go On uh, charity T-shirts. Um, oh, you can't get from H&M. You can only get on that. <laughs> <laughs> Give it Sorry. a click to be able to get it. We're going to move to the part of the show that's called Where in the World is Terry. Where in the World is Terry. Where in the World is Terry. Okay, okay. I know that uh, Nick and Sam have been uh, uh, hosting a few shows, and they'll be back on next week and having some fun with this. Um, but I'm going to I'm going back to my boring old uh, ways. I'm going to give you a drone over a a city, a town, a country, 
somewhere in the world. Now, the way it works, we've kind of changed the rules. I don't know if you've seen this, but there's now a $2 bet. So you guys are in, even though you didn't sign a claim, uh, disclaimer or anything. You're in for two bucks here. So Terry, it, I don't know where I am now. <laughs> Never mind where you are in the world. I don't know where I am. We do have a drone of Swansea, but at the moment, okay. all it is is just white cloud. That's all we can see. <laughs> rain. It's covered in rain. <laughs> so this is how it goes. We're going to change my uh, background, and it can be anywhere we could... Uh, do that and we would be in the city of anyone know nope any ideas no it's not in new zealand is it that is seattle washington uh, or there the giveaway for that one actually is that the arch no that's, Ca that's cabo san lucas where ann and i live uh half of the year and i wish it was more than half i was gonna say skegness but i was way off that's quite like Skaggy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So um, let me see what we're going to do. We're going to start with Michael. All right, Michael. This, oh, this is, is it. I'm dreading this. I think this should be fairly easy. <clears throat> where in the world am I? Oh, oh! Come on! I just gave it away. Is it Spain? It is, but you've got to be. Uh, I've got to be quicker than that. Sorry. I'm not, not quicker. You've got to be more, uh, more accurate. Specific. Yes. Which, um, oh, look at that! Look at that! Can't believe man. you haven't got it yet. Come on! Foggy. Two bucks, mate. Two bucks going to car. Do you give up? Yeah, I give up. Right. Oh. Come on, Carl. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the two bucks, though. What's the news? Oh, my wife came in and stole it from you. Oh, it's my bell. Yeah, it said my bell on the wall, didn't it? Yeah, it said my bell on the wall. Idiot. <laughs> That's my bell down on the coast. Have either of you been to my bell? No. No? Okay, well. I haven't even been to Skegness. Yeah. Well, Anna and I used to live there. Not Skegness, Marbella. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going with... Um, this is going over to Carl. So you, this, it's no dollars owed here. It's still zero. So Carl's going to swoop in for the two dollars. Where am I? Oh, I don't know if that top dialogue gives it away. If it does, I'm going to change it. Didn't see that. Maybe it doesn't. No, it Pretty doesn't. Cool, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, uh, San Francisco? Not a chance. No? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, you might, we might get some other uh, clues coming up pretty soon. See, most people don't recognize it by that, but you may recognize it by that. It's not somewhere in Asia, is it? That's, yeah, you've got it close. You've given them a clue. You just may be <clears throat> Mate, I don't know. I haven't got a clue. No idea. Come on, uh, Michael. Steal him for the two bucks. Okay. <laughs> it's a tough one. This is a tough one. We've got no one actually answering it. one buck for Asia? You, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to tell you what it is. It is Japan. Oh, definitely worth a buck. It's Tokyo, but it's unusual because it's a different view of uh, Tokyo. Here's one for both of you. First one to get this. Where's that? Oh, God. Look at that. The famous building. No? It looks amazing. I have no doubt. But it also looks like the opening to Neighbours. So, <laughs> could be anywhere. <laughs> That's the first time. I told, I told you I was terrible at this game. That is going to be the only time over, overnight drone footage of Shanghai is going to be. Shanghai. Shanghai. Damn it. Shanghai. Beat me to it. it. Damn it. I was so close then. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. Well done, guys. You've <laughs> <laughs> so been facetious there, Carl. <laughs> Gang, hi. Um, no one got it. I think. Well, got it, and that's it. At least we don't owe any money. 
It's true. My dad always said to me, never owe anyone any money. And I don't. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, well, that question we ask on every single show. Love this question. Love the answers even more. It is this. If you could spend the next 60 minutes uh, with any two people, dead or alive, historical, or someone you've known um, in any place in the world, who would you like to spend the next hour with? Where would you go? And what would you talk about? We're going to start with Michael. Um, well, the first one's really easy for me. It would have to be Elvis. Okay. Um, I know everyone probably is like, yeah, of course it's going to be Elvis. It would be Elvis, and it would be, I would be sat in the jungle room. Um, for anyone that's not an Elvis fan, that was one of the rooms in his house that was designed just like a jungle. Um, and I just want to see, like, all the weird stuff he collected, like the guns and the police badges and um, just just see how he, how he was and, um, you know, because he was – everyone – a lot of people don't realise he was into gospel music so much, influenced mm -hmm. by gospel, and um, he had some incredible gospel albums out. And I just want to talk about that. And the other person, really easy for me, and I'm currently writing a show about him at the moment, and it would be my granddad, um, Jack, my, my mum's dad. He was in the Navy. He served on the HMS Belfast – um, he went all over the world on ships. So, um, I started seeing some artifacts the other day where he did the crossing and all these different places he went. And I'm like, Oh God, I've done most of those myself now, but we never would have had that chat when he was alive because I was too young. Um, yeah. so just to talk about being at sea and the Navy and all stuff, that would have been amazing. So that, there you go. That's my two. So you, your granddad and Elvis in the jungle run. That's what, there you go. Have you been to Graceland? No, I'm gagging to go. I would love to go. Uh, Anne and Nick uh, took me there for my sixth year of last year, and uh, it's amazing. It's, uh, yeah, very, very good. Yeah, and I'm not a big Elvis fan. I was, I like his stuff, you know, but I can imagine you stood there by the jungle room kind of freaking out a little bit. Oh, yeah, well, it's on the bucket list. If I come to Arizona, then I've got to just make the flight across, right? I know it's not that close, but... Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. Close enough. Brilliant. Carl, what about you? Two people, one place, anywhere in the world, where would you go? Who would you be with? I think I would go back to the making of the Abbey Road album with Lennon and McCartney. Just just to be a fly. I just sit in the background like, like a dirty old man. I don't know, like, like a weirdo sitting in the background, just take it all in. Take the smells, take the sounds, take the the kind of room in and just see how they worked. Just yeah. see how, how two incredibly talented musicians yeah. bounced off each other. Just some, something like that, probably. Or I'd go back to the first Jellyfish album and what's that being made. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually, I've seen so Abbey Road, Lennon and McCartney, I think, uh, two of the very few people that you cannot overhype. You can yeah, I think I, I find it strange a lot of the time because I think people they they listen to our music and and maybe don't don't realize how big a fan of the Beatles and the Stones and those bands that I am. My you know my my mom and dad. That's all we played when I was a kid. Beatles, Stones. The house was just full of music like that. So I'd probably go back there. I think that would be the coolest thing to do. Uh, one of the best days of my life we was in, we spent a day in Studio 2 at Abbey Road with Nick and, and Christian and uh, Anne, my wife, and it was wow. incredible. If I Talking about going back to seeing the, the Jellyfish album, if I could go back, I would have loved to have been in Strawberry Studios when 10CC created I'm Not In Love, like uh, Roger said. Wow, Stein. yeah. Nick, yeah. Nick recorded his song, song in Abbey Studios, right? Yeah, Nick, we went, that's what I was saying. We went there last year with Christian and Tim engineered it. <clears throat> Nick recorded all the piano parts and uh, some of the backing vocals uh, and some of the keyboard instruments on his album. And it was just surreal being there. It was, it was incredible. It was also horrible because it was the day uh, that Liverpool beat Manchester United. <laughs> The day before, and we had we watched it. A kind of one eye on Nick recording his songs on 
on the same grand piano that McCartney played Hey Jude and one eye watching Liverpool beat United the day before Mourinho got fired. So part- one eye on Nick and two eyes on United. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, what a great show. Uh, this has been today. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. This has been a great way to mark our 50th episode. Um, to um, two quite diverse careers, but two brilliant people to have on the show. And now I want to have you both back. We're gonna. We're actually doing a, a new uh, a new version of TED Talk that we're working on. Um, but just to give it away, we're going to have um, instead of having four boxes like we've got now, we're going to have. Uh, well, actually, we've got three. We're going to have six. And the only purpose of the show is we're going to take one album and break it down, play the song and tell. And tell. so the first album we're going to do is Sgt. Peppers. And um, uh, we going to talk about the album. And, um, so uh, maybe we'll have a Who's Molly show and break down those. Uh, that would be cool. Um, but thank you both for being on the show. It's been a great one today. Hi, thank you for inviting us. Uh, it's been great. Um, let me see. We've got people just commented on lots of comments about Lennon and McCartney. Christian Phillips said it was a great show. I think that's him watching it. Maybe, maybe one of his representatives, uh, writing on there for him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's watched the show. It's been, uh, it's been incredible. So thank you both for joining us. Thanks to Ross for producing this and for helping us uh, develop this over the last 50 episodes. Uh, we've never had the, the opportunity to put Ross's face on this feed, our producer, but one uh, little known, uh, little known thing about uh, Ross is he was extremely close to being the world champion at Tetris. Got to level tw- wow. level 29. All right. I wonder he's going to fit in all those boxes into the one screen. That's it. <laughs> That's why we get the three boxes on here. Only a- <laughs> that but thanks for joining us it's been a great show we will be back to another with another tomorrow for episode 51 sam and nick will be hosting their own shows uh, uh next week and one of the highlights is on tuesday where we have uh, famed uh, italian fashion designer alex angelino on the show it's going to be great thanks for joining us wash your hands stay safe we'll see you on the next one take care everybody